Hey guys, so I'm doing something a little bit different today. It's a thread compilation of people's experiences with the party's mad lad. Everyone's had a mad lad in their grip. Tell us your own mad lad story in the comments below. And while you're down there, like and subscribe sure. Let's get into the video. There are plenty of threads about that guy. The douche that makes any game terrible. The loon is one that pulls something completely ridiculous and succeeds. Playing D&D. The loon is captain of the party's ship. Big bad evil guy is this guy that has been harassing at every point and making our lives terrible. Planning a siege. Captain stands. Everyone to the ship! It's defended from the land and the air, but not the sea! Party points out his keep is two miles inland. His face as we ride a man slash wizard made tidal wave all the way to the keep. Literally flooding his defences. I have one from a Halo game I ran some time ago. All Marine and ODST players in a commandeered Pelican dropship trying to escape a Covey occupied city. Being chased by a trio of Banshee fighters and their Pelican doesn't have any weapons at all. Not even the rotating undernose chain gun featured in the concept art. One player gets it into his head to strap himself into the seat facing the rear facing door and arm his rocket launcher to try and take out the Banshees. He orders the squad AI to open the door but it has been damaged from the other side and doesn't open. So he decides, fuck it, and orders everyone to cover their face, eyes and ears as he launches a rocket at the door, blowing it open and counting on the overpressure to suck out the debris and shrapnel. He narrowly makes the roll, blowing open the door and somehow not killing everyone else in the bay, but he fucks up his next roll. The rope snaps. The level of cursing was palatable as he pointed out himself he didn't have a shit. So I let him have a few actions to lose his remaining rocket and then try and say farewell before he makes an ill-timed splat on the ground. He loses the other rocket and takes out the first banshee. He then hatches the mother of all batshit plans. He unlatches his shotgun and uses it as a makeshift hook, trying to aim for the wings of the first banshee. He misses. He then goes for the second banshee. With every roll against him, he somehow makes the roll. My face when he manages to grab the second banshee by the wing. Hold on and then use said shotgun to kill the elite pilot and then drag the corpses out. My face when he commandeers the banshee and shoots down the other remaining fighter. That crazy crazy bastard managed to escape every roll and spartaned his way out of it, so I had no choice to give him his 30 minutes of fame. GM sets up a town filled with guards, needs to get a special item from town, friend suggests stealing it. Dude, it's filled with a buttfuck ton of guards, there's no way. I have a plan. Friend takes GM and begins whispering to him his master plan. We all wonder what they're discussing. GM sighs. Very, very lenient. Stand back and behold my handiwork. Fucking Skyrim quote. Goes into town and uses all his money on trapped materials. Sets up about 25 traps in the woods, including incendiary bombs. Fire, woods. What could possibly go wrong? Friend goes in. Bluff check. Natural fucking 20. I poop in front of the guard's house. What? Since it's a 20, all the guards are enraged and take this as a personal attack. All guards follow him into the woods. Roll for traps. Goddamn high rolls on each one of them. All guards dead, forest on fire, spreading to town. Town on fire, burning to the ground, people dying. He goes in and gets the item, comes back, turns in quest. 50 fucking gold. It was worth the experience. 100 XP for each of us. My fucking face when. TG, I think I'm the loon. Shadowrun 4th edition. Team is asked to blow up an office building, probably for insurance related reasons, without leaving anything that might suggest that we were hired to blow it up. Building has fairly strong magical and physical defences, and will be hard to enter undetected. Building is in Seattle, near a Boeing plant. Me? Gentlemen, I propose we ram this building with an airplane. Oh god. <laughs> Team denies it, on the grounds of difficulty stealing an airplane, and having no one to blame it on. Me. Nonsense. We simply blame it on terrorists and gangers. Like the Halloweeners. We can blame it on them too. Team again refuses, stating that they have no way of getting access to Halloweeners. And still the plane is an issue. Me. Well, why use a plane when a big truck will suffice? We eventually cause a fire at a Starbucks, stealing the resulting fire truck, load it full of C4, and dead circus clowns. I don't even know how my contact got those. And have our rigger ram it into the building at 90 miles per hour. 
News calls it largest terror attack in years and profound evidence of the dangers of gangs in Seattle. Knight earned counter terrorist task force kills the Halloweeners to a man. Group enters town. The loon encounters black market magic dealer. Dealer is selling a jar of darkness, which was intended to be a grenade that would cause area effect blindness. The loon ingests it to gain dark powers. It blinds him. <laughs> Proceeds to convince party and townspeople that he's prophet. <laughs> Dark, what? Hershey. <laughs> Dark Hershey. Party creeping around a derelict manufactorum in the lower hive levels of a planet in the midst of a civil war. Manufactorum is being used as a base for the cult that started the civil war. But most of the people are at a holy cult meeting. So we are sneaking around looking for a way to kill the leaders without getting killed and eaten by his pack of chaos mutant ghouls. We turn a corner into a group of patrolling guards. Everyone draws guns. Fight looks like it's going to happen. Party Arbiter, disguised as a traitor guardsman, screams at the guards. Why aren't you at the meeting? Succeeds on the bullshitting roll. Guards look confused. Party even more confused. Ask why we're not at the meeting. Arbiter points to Party Tech Priest and tells cultists mind rusted lunatic keeps beeping and gibbering and trying to run around the corridors, fixing everything. So we're making sure he doesn't cause the factory to explode or anything. Tech Priest looks the part of a crazy person being covered with blood from reclaiming the cybernetics from one of the cultists heretics earlier without anaesthetic. Tech Priest begins beeping and gibbering and flailing and the cultist decides to leave us alone. Everyone walks on, boggling that the Arbiter who has spent most of the game solving his problems by screaming at them and hitting them with the party transport just got them out of a fight. He says they should try talking more often. Next corner they turn is full of warped mutant girls. Never mind. I have a few stories where I've been the loon, at least to my party. Fourth edition madness at Grimoire Abbey Adventures. Party comes up to the guard tower filled with orcs and a boulder throwing ogre. Way too many orcs.jpg. Took the null feet to get ghost sound at will and start using it to make the most annoying high pitched sound possible. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Centered on the ogre's head, it starts freaking out, smacking orcs around, manages to take out most of them before they put it down. 3.5 homebrew setting. Party is heading down to the sewer to find some sun cult or something. Head down there, DM mentions there's a path to the left and a dead end about 10 feet to the right. Suspicious sewer layout. Be um, BPM. <laughs> I don't know. Fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. Start attacking the wall, noticing it sounds hollow. Bypass most of the sewer dungeon and stumble into the cult base. Mutants and monsters Pokemon game. Party discovers source of Pokemon abilities and mutations in humans. Is caused by large radioactive mountains. DM expects us to avoid radiation like the plague even though staying on the mountain gives three character points a day, which is a hell of a lot in mutants and monsters. Say fuck it, I'm living on the mountains. Spend character points on regeneration as quickly as I can to offset the damage. Rack up points and slowly become radioactive demigod on death mountain, complete with kill cult following me. Playing bard, doesn't want to be heroic, forced to by fate, read GM. His backstory was basically that he was a bard of above average ability which meant that in the small town that he lived in, he was having a pretty good life. His mistake was feeling basic genre savvy and thinking that he could do a job with a small group of plucky adventurers that he met in a tavern and end the job with a fair bit of coin to make his life very cushy. No complications. Over the course of several campaigns, he failed to escape the party on 87 separate occasions, incited a civil war by playing songs insulting the king's length girth and oratory skills. Succeeded in using Charm Monster and made the first campaign's big bad evil guy's pet dragon throw the big bad evil guy off while flying, sending the big bad evil guy into the ground, his battle axe falling on top of him, dealing even more damage and the party ganked him while he was prone. Failed a knowledge check about fey history and culture, leading to him getting two 20s and an 18 when rolling performed to pleasure the fey queen about 20 female fey nobles to avoid being enslaved. 
finish the campaign by using sympathetic vibration to collapse an entire mountain on the final Big Bad Evil Guy. Squad needs to breach Hive City Spire. Can't get up without wading through bad guys. Comes up with idea. Take a little while to build a fucking huge catapult. An actual honest to fuck catapult that could throw a Lehman Russ. Get in seat all orky like with parachute. Get launched out towards bar. While flying out, take rocket launcher, blast hole into the side of building. Use parachute as I'm descending. Land right in the hole. Activate teleport homer for rest of squad. And that's how I did something stupid very well. I don't know if my friend's shitty homebrew could count, but fuck it. It was a funny moment. Friend comes up with his own homebrew system. Makes a grappler monk type character. Get gloves of equality, which essentially allows me to grapple anything while wearing them. As if they were my own weight, which is originally meant to grapple ogres and other large creatures. Fast forward to the end of the campaign. Big bad evil guy trying to summon a dragon that was sealed away in the moon. I get an idea, and get the cleric to cast a spell that makes my health unable to fall below 1 while active, and get the wizard to launch me at the moon. Roll 1d20 to grapple the fucking moon. Natural 20. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> That'd <be> savage moment. <laughs> yeah. Suplex the moon along with the dragon into the earth. Completely wreck the big bad evil guy, his moon dragon and most of the planet. Friends stop playing that homebrew. The only time my first character has been more than a typical dwarf murder hobo. Party broke into a dude's boathouse to steal it. The dude has a fancy repetition crossbow because the DM was tired of our shit. Fuck it, I have so much armour I can tank that shit anyways. Brandish a broken watch I had for whatever reason. Yells, time stop! DM rolls initiative for the boat owner. Natural one. The she-ogre proceeds to eat him, while he stares at me in perplexity. Playing Exalted 2nd Edition, party is camped outside a city in the north, along with dozens of refugees. City refuses to open gates, despite agreement with these tribes to protect them in their times of need. Vargital Vagina. Big-ass three-armed cannibals come charging out of the woods. Party leaps into action, trying to fight off the hordes and get the refugees inside the gate. Trying to open gatehouse. Fight a staged retreat. Party Eclipse says, The fuck is this shit? Eclipse reveals a Magitech motorcycle. Rides it up the outer walls of the city, over the inner walls, then rides the bike through the city gate. Charges out into the middle of the v- vagital vagina. Proceeds to beat the shit out of the vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Using the motorcycle as a club. And that's how he became the party's de facto leader. He then proceeded to murder the nobility using a demon lion in a dress because he thought their last words being dandelion, dandelion, would be hilarious. I wish I had recent ones. These are about one of my old characters in D&D, a rogue with a penchant for traps and explosives. Spend a large amount of time creating hilarious amounts of explosives, including vials of alchemist fire and good old fashioned frag grenades. Party ends up travelling to an abandoned temple to relieve it of a sacred item before an advancing army of evil gets a hold of it. Party races there, gets in, finds the item, goddess of fate appears to me and pauses time. Get led outside of the temple by the goddess as she starts rambling on about the fate of existence and I get a monologue the GM had prepared. End up in front of the enemy army who is surprisingly close to the temple, apparently by magic means. Spot the vampire leading the army and his three kindred. Essentially the vampire's harem. Goddess continues spouting exposition as I laugh gleefully and start balancing vials of alchemist fire on each of them while leaving a bunch of grenades around their feet. Get led back into the temple. Goddess disappears. Extremely loud explosion from outside. XP for days, son. Days. Days. Yeah. Later though. Avoid extremely pissed off and smoking vampire by hiding up a tree in a forest. Startled by him appearing on the branch next to me and threatening to hang me from the tree with my own intestines. Oh shit, run! Watch jump check to leap from branch to branch hard. Plummet to the ground. Feel tumble check. Normally fall damage isn't an issue, but at this point my character had vials of alchemist fire and grenades on his belt. Instant viking funeral. Just add gravity. <laughs> Well, this is the first time we've really done a compilation since we've stopped using text-speech. 
Yeah, with the voiceover. Yeah. The problem with thread compilations is, generally speaking, threads are just really fucking big. Like, an average 4chan fucking thread is minimum in text speech. Like, well, like four hours. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they are just difficult to do a lot of the time. But I like this one because it's loads of like wee short stories. It's not like a, it's not like a role playing one. Yeah. It's not like the cold shoulder. It's not and like it's not a, a wall of text. Yeah, exactly. It's just wee short one off stories. And um, if you have any of your own stories, definitely let us know down below and let us know what you thought about this. I know a lot of people do enjoy these style of videos, but I personally I really enjoy like stories i like longer formatted stories but they're nice to do these from time to time so if you know of any or if you've got any of yourself maybe if we get enough we could even do maybe a viewer like comment, comment video yeah, yeah. Like comment award Read your story site yeah i think i'll be pretty cool actually if we could do something like that i don't know i think you guys would enjoy it i well, would enjoy anyway. it anyway as always show time Discord fucking... I, I know I did this last time, but I don't even feel bad. So we got Discord, we got NordVPN, we got t-shirts, we got models. Got all that shit. I feel like a traveling all merchant. All that good shit. I, got, I feel like a traveling merchant at this stage. It's like, fucking buy my shit. <laughs> 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 fucking do it, please. <laughs> please. I'm fucking desperate. The channel got demonetized for a month. Please, for the love of God. Okay, I'll stop that enough. Anyway, look, hope you guys enjoy. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. All done. Moment. Lost.